Azərbaycan Respublikasının Prezidenti Canab İlham Əliyev. Gentlemen, dear guests, first of all, I'd like to greet all the participants of the forum and express my gratitude to our guests for being with us today. We have uh, guests from more than 100 countries, more than 500 foreign representatives participate at the forum. This shows that the forum, in a relatively short period of time, transformed into a global platform to address one of the most important issues of today's agenda, issues of cultural dialogue. I remember eight years ago when we held the first forum, probably we didn't even imagine that the forum will get such a broad international support. Our initiative to organize World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue in 2011 was based on our history our geography, and our understanding that in order to make the world safer, we need to be very active on the issues of promotion, dialogue between civilizations, between cultures, between representatives of different religions and ethnic groups. And broad international support, which was shown to the forum, encourages us today among organizers of the forum, we have leading organizations of the world, and our joint efforts, joint activity, contributes to the cause of intercultural dialogue. Azerbaijan is a place where for centuries, representatives of different religions, ethnic groups, lived, created, communicated. For centuries, Azerbaijan is a land of religious tolerance, peaceful coexistence of representatives of different nationalities. Our history, our geography uh, shows that only in the spirit of partnership, in the spirit of mutual respect, we can achieve success. Today's Azerbaijan's rapid development also is based on this cultural heritage, also is driven by solidarity, which all the representatives of our society demonstrate. We are proud of our history, we are proud of our historical monuments, which also demonstrate that for centuries, representatives of different religions lived, created in Azerbaijan. We are proud of our ancient history. One of the oldest mosques in the world is situated in the ancient city of Shamahi, one of the oldest churches in the Caucasus is situated in our ancient city of Shiki, the church of Caucasian Albania. Our history is history of cultural diversity. And uh, today, based on that historical heritage, Azerbaijan demonstrates to the world that intercultural dialogue is the only way how to bring countries closer, how to establish more bridges between representatives of different <coughs> religions and uh, civilizations. Multiculturalism for us is the way how we live. Uh, this is a relatively new word, but uh, we live in this atmosphere for centuries. And the fact that 2016 was declared the year of multiculturalism in Azerbaijan demonstrates that we want to attract attention of the world to this important idea. 2017 was announced the year of Islamic solidarity. So that was also a symbolic step demonstrating our uh, historical heritage, our roots, and our openness to the world. And I think these tendencies, if they prevail, prevail uh, globally, will make our world safer, more predictable, and uh, more peaceful. Multiculturalism for us also is one of the important elements of our policy, and the International Center of Multiculturalism 
was created in Azerbaijan. And uh, we are promoting these values. We are demonstrating that multiculturalism has a great future. We all know that there are different views regarding this issue, but I think our forum and numerous international events organized in Azerbaijan and different parts of the world with this agenda clearly shows that we are all trying to promote the values of multiculturalism. Uh, world Forum on International Dialogue is one of the important international events globally and of course for our country, but at the same time, Azerbaijan during last years hosted numerous international events, such as World Religious Leaders Forum, uh, traditional Baku Humanitarian Forum. So seven times we organized uh, Baku uh, Global Forum, which is also a very important platform to address issues of political development and cultural dialogue. That forum is organized by Nizami Genjevi International Center and many other important international events. Thus, we are trying to attract attention of the world community to these important issues. And I'm sure that the discussions uh, at the forum today, tomorrow, uh, will not only reveal the problems and, uh, what you say, allow the speakers to express their views, but also will contribute to strengthening the partnership solidarity, cooperation, and as a result, we'll build more bridges between cultures. Last year, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of Baku process. This is also an initiative that we are proud of. I remember when we launched this initiative in 2008, and it immediately got very positive international uh, approach and attention. That was for the first time when Azerbaijan gathered together ministers of culture of uh, member states of the Council of Europe and member states of Islamic Cooperation Organization. And uh, more than 100 countries got together in, in Baku in order to discuss the prospects for cooperation. We organized another session with participation of above-mentioned uh, ministers in 2009. And uh, this initiative was named Baku Process. And today, Baku Process is one of the most important instrument of dialogue between Europe and the Muslim world. And Azerbaijan, as one of the few countries which is member of Islamic Cooperation Organization and uh, uh, European institutions, is playing its natural and I'm sure positive role in establishment contacts in uh, providing opportunities for dialogue. Dialogue, what we need. We need dialogue in issues related to culture, in issues related to inter-religious relations. We need dialogue on all the issues, on political agenda, on economic cooperation, on issues related to security, and the name of the forum is Dialogue. So that's what we present to the world, and that's what gets very broad international support. So Baku process today is an initiative which is supported by United Nations, by other leading international organizations, and of course, I'm sure that Baku process has a great future. The forums like this attracts attention of international community to the issues of cultural dialogue. It elaborates new ideas, new approaches, and for those who make decisions in different countries, in international organizations, I think this is a very uh, good and positive platform to make right decisions. Azerbaijan, in this respect, uh, inside the country and outside conducts the policy which is based on mutual understanding, on cooperation. Uh, we are building bridges. We are situated between uh, Europe and Asia 
and our geography, of course, influenced our history and uh, is influencing our today's development. So today, Azerbaijan, as a relatively <coughs> independent, relatively new independent country, plays an important role in building bridges between uh, Europe and Asia, political, economic, cultural, and uh, bridges from uh, the practical point of view, like connectivity, transportation. Uh, last year we celebrated 27th anniversary of our independence, and during this period of time, Azerbaijan transformed into a moder modern developing country with uh, <coughs> modern infrastructure and with a very clear vision for the future. <clears throat> One of the main problems we are facing for many years is uh, Armenian occupation. For more than 25 years, Armenia continues to occupy our historical land, Nagorno-Karabakh, and seven other districts of, of Azerbaijan. This is brutal violation of international law. Our people were subject of ethnic cleansing. More than one million refugees uh, became homeless as a result of Armenian aggression and occupation. OEC twice sent a fact-finding mission to occupy territories, and their report clearly shows that all our historical heritage, all our historical religious monuments are destroyed. United Nations Security Council adopted four resolutions demanding immediate and unconditional withdrawal of Armenian troops from our territories, and these resolutions remain on paper. So this is one of the indicators that sometimes resolutions of Security Council are not implemented for so many years, and there is no mechanism of implementation, or if there is a mechanism, it is not uh, <coughs> applied, and thus Azerbaijani lands are still uh, under occupation. Numerous international organizations like Islamic Cooperation Organization, Movement of Non-Alignment, OEC, Council of Europe, and other adopted similar decisions and resolutions with respect to territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. Territorial integrity of Azerbaijan is recognized by the whole world and must be restored, and the conflict must be resolved based on international law norms, relative uh, United Nations Security Council resolutions, United Nations Charter, Helsinki Final Act, and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. Despite this huge problem and uh, humanitarian catastrophe, Azerbaijan uh, managed to transform into a modern country with a very active foreign policy, with a economic policy which allowed us to improve largely the living standards of our people. On foreign policy track, Azerbaijan is a reliable partner to many countries. We are active members of Islamic Cooperation Organization. We have very close ties with the European Union and with nine members of EU, Azerbaijan adopted uh, documents on strategic partnership. As I said, Baku process is our contribution to establishing bridges between Europe and the Muslim world. Uh, in other words, our foreign policy agenda is based on cooperation, on uh, strengthening partnership, and on mutual benefit. And our foreign policy allows us to implement very important international energy transportation project because without good cooperation with partners with different countries, it's not possible to implement this project. Our economic development during the last period of time was also <coughs> supported by our energy projects. And together with our neighbors and with our partners, we managed to uh, connect Caspian Sea with Black Sea, Caspian Sea with Mediterranean Sea by a diversified network of pipelines, thus providing energy security for us, for our neighbors, and for many countries in the world. And today, when we are actively working on implementation of the Southern Gas Corridor, this is a 
new scale of the project. This project already uh, <coughs> makes it possible for seven countries to get together and to take benefit and take advantage of this. Uh, our economic development during the last 15 years was the fastest in the world. We implement very important reforms uh, which allow us to improve largely the business climate in our country, to attract investments. And according to the World Bank's latest assessment, Azerbaijan is number 25 uh, with respect to doing business program of the World Bank. And uh, business climate is very friendly to foreign investments. We are working now on the strategy of reducing our uh, foreign debt, which is low, it's about 19% of GDP, and at the same time working on issues related to diversification of our economy and uh, eradication of unemployment and poverty. That was one of the main uh, topics on our agenda because our economic development is transformed into the increase of the living standards of our people. Fifteen years ago, around 50% of our population live be below the poverty line. Now this figure went down to about 5 to 6%. And uh, poverty, uh, unemployment, social inequality, illiteracy is one of the, they are one of the sources of uh, radicalism, extremism. And Azerbaijan is a very active uh, partner in the fight against international terrorism, radicalism, extremism. At the same time, we promote to the world the values of Islamic civilizations. Uh, we organize numerous exhibitions, presentations, cultural events in different parts of the world to demonstrate our culture and to <coughs> demonstrate the culture of our partners in other Muslim countries. Uh, talking about uh, connectivity, I'd like to mention the projects which Azerbaijan participates in, particularly the transportation project. We look at these projects not only from point of view of transportation connectivity. These projects actually change the atmosphere in the region. They create a broad format for international cooperation. Azerbaijan is situated on the ancient Silk Road and modern infrastructure which we created recently transformed Azerbaijan already into important transit country. And uh, without close cooperation with our immediate neighbors and other partners, it is not possible to become a transit country. You need neighbors, you need partners. Therefore, investments in transportation they automatically lead to a more predictable situation in the region where countries share the benefit. Our uh, policy is to uh, achieve our goals, to make countries stronger through cooperation, through mutual understanding, and through shared benefit. In our uh, policy related to energy security, we always trying to find the proper balance between producers, transitors, and consumers, because there should be a win-win situation, otherwise it will not work. And uh, we always must be ready to extend support to our partners when they need it. And of course, if we need this support, we also expect the same from our partners. Azerbaijan also is uh, active participant of North-South transportation network. Thus, if you look at the map, you will see that from North to South, from East to West, the uh, transportation lines cross our country. But in order to do that, we had to work hard. Geography is not enough. Geography only is a prerequisite, is a basic uh, element, but we invested largely to transportation infrastructure, to seaports, railroads, uh, <coughs> airports, highways, so that today Azerbaijan from geographical point of view and point of view of transportation hub can provide a lot of opportunities for our partners. 
Dear friends, today's forum is a remarkable event uh, here in Azerbaijan. I once again like to express gratitude to all our partners, partner organizations, uh, intellectuals, politicians, public figures, representatives of uh, non-governmental organizations, representatives of media, uh, scientists who participate at the forum. I'm sure that discussions will be very productive. And as a result of discussions, the recommendations will be provided. And I'm sure that those who make decisions about the future of their countries or regional development will take into account our recommendations and the world will be more stable, secure and safe. Thank you very much.
Mr. President uh, Aliyev, yet again you've uh, inspired us and thank you so much for your opening remarks. This film reminds us of a long history, a history longer than the Baku process, a history characterized by war and conflict, by invasion and destruction, but also by the advance of knowledge, the development of science, and new ways of thinking. Mr. President, your remarks have reminded us of our responsibility within and from this history and the importance of the work of this forum. In your remarks, and two years ago, Mr. President, you highlighted two areas that you felt were really of concern. The first, that we don't do enough as a community to understand the benefits of diversity, its strength for our communities. And secondly, you were concerned of our need to counter and the negative media that builds agendas in our world that none of us want, the agendas of hate crime, of discrimination. These are our responsibilities. And our wonderful world demands that we do more. So we need to learn to live with respect for each other, to protect each other, to support each other. And the Baku process is an important part of the rebuilding, the defenses of the peace, that in our minds, conflict and war were created. It is in our minds also that we build together the defenses of the peace. Our work is important. The work of the forum Mr. President, is successful because of your encouragement of a collaboration of remarkable organizations, of governments, of organizations, of academics who come together in quite a unique way to apply their minds to the defenses of the peace. And I'm very pleased that we have today at our joining ceremony representatives of the key organizations that help with the inspiration and the innovation of the Baku process. So without further ado, I'd like to call the first of our partners, His Excellency uh, Miguel Angel Moratinos of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, the High Representative, if you'd like to come and join on the stage. The Alliance of Civilizations since 2005 been a remarkable instigation. Former Secretary General Kofi Annan at the inspiration of the governments of Turkey and Spain to focus on the polarization in our society and to bring practical actions. Good morning. Your Excellency, President Ilan Alayev, President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Excellencies, my dear guests and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends. It has been always for me a great pleasure to be back in this fantastic city, in Baku. But today I'm coming with a sense of emotion and responsibility. Emotion, Your Excellency, Mr. President, because it's my first time I come to Azerbaijan, to Baku, in my new capacity as a High Representative of the United Nations for the Alliance of Civilization. High Representative of the United Nations for the Alliance of Civilization. And the sense of responsibility because uh, the Alliance of Civilization is a partner of this Baku process. And for that reason, my speech, my thought, have a special sense for me. I think the title of this uh, gathering, this feast uh, of this uh, conference is very clear. He has three main words. He has the word of dialogue, building dialogue. Second word, into action. And if you allow me, I will add a third concept. Dialogue, action, in order to have an alliance. 
I think the conference come in a very timely time. I just uh, come before you, standing before you today, with uh, a sense of pain and concern. Yesterday, I arrived to Azerbaijan coming from Sri Lanka. I went to Colombo on behalf of Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, to pay my respect to the government of Sri Lanka and the people of Sri Lanka, and express my solidarity with the victims. They had uh, paid a great price when the three Catholic churches and three hotels were attacked by these fanatics. More than 200 people were killed and many injured. And they destroyed the pattern of solidarity and conviviality within Sri Lanka. Or oh, they tried to destroy that. Unfortunately, fortunately, they didn't achieve that. It's then devastating to look at what is going on in the world. It was not the case only of Sri Lanka. A few months ago, we have in, in Pittsburgh, a synagogue in California, attacked by a gunman eh, while Jewish worshippers were trying to pray. Just the last week, it was also in the uh, in, in United States, when they were observing the culmination of Passover. It was the same in Philippines, where there was also two Catholic church were attacking. And of course, in New Zealand, with this uh, horrible attack in Christ Church. In all these uh, occasions, we were feeling a different attitude. Always in the international history that we have seen in this fantastic video, history has been with uh, differences, enemies, adversary, conflict, wars. But today, my dear friend, we are under a different approach, a very perverse and very dangerous attempt to introduce in our minds and hearts something that we should eradicate. That's have a name, hate. It's a kind of cancer, the hate discourse. What means hate? Hate was to exterminate, to eliminate the other. Not just to win or not just to impose, no, just is more dangerous than that. And that's for that reason, I think uh, we have uh, to work together in order to avoid this uh, criminal attitude. Let me be clear. That occasion provides us with the opportunity to reaffirm the problem is never the face. The problem, my friends, is those who manipulate the faithful and turn them against each other by the perverted interpretation of holy test. We should uh, not let them dissuade our resolve to protect the ultimate human right of each other, every individual living on this planet that we all share. The right for religious freedom and belief. To this universally acknowledged human right, we should add another inherent right, that is the right to pray in peace. This is what uh, the UN Secretary General has entrusted me developing a plan of action for safeguarding religious sites to guarantee of safety of worshippers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the volatile nexus between uh, old conflict, terrorism, and uh, violent extremism remain an ongoing challenge for the international community. We are all aware that violent extremism seek to divide and show instability in our society. It is extremely also true that the risk of violent extremism often increases under the same condition that led to, to heightened risk of conflict. Compounding this challenge, social media added fuel to the raging fire. The dark web offered a helping hand and provide a space for radicals while supremacist and ultra-right advocates to spew their twisted ideology. For that reason, 
the General Assembly and Security Council have placed the sustained peace concept at the heart of the UN peace building work. Preventing violent extremism and ensuring sustainable peace are complementary and mutually reinforcing goals. The importance of dialogue as an essential tool for conflict prevention and the prevention of violent extremism cannot be overstated. It is where the United Nations of Allied Civilization find its needs. The UN OSC is a political instrument promoting peace and the future identity and cultural based conflict. At the same time, we see that multilateralism, which uh, constitutes the basis of the work of the United Nations, is under unprecedented attack. We need to defend it and reinforce it, but we need equally to exert more effort in making multilateralism more effective, sustainable, and more result-oriented. Creating opportunities and platform for community engagement is key. UNIOC has been committed, dating back to the high-level group report in 2006, to forging partnership with all range of stakeholders, including religious leaders, representatives of civil society, organizations, youth, women, academia, media professional, business community. But these platforms are not sufficient. We should enhance our role in prevention and mediation. Multilateralism, my dear friends, which constitute the basis of the work of the United Nations is under unprecedented danger. We need to defend it. We all are multilateralists. We all proclaim that, but how we work? When the times come for conflict, for understanding, for engaging each other, we have to review our faith in multilateralism. We have to make it credible. In all instances, our project at UNOC, our political advocacy, and my interventions since I took office are designed to promote the underlying values that are crucial to prevent violent extremism conducive to terrorism, conflict resolution, and to advance of the goal of sustainable peace and security. Tolerance, dialogue, inclusion, empathy, and peaceful coexistence are the key words. With that in mind, the Alliance is organizing this forum, two sessions, which is cross-cutting our main pillar, a plenary session on youth peace, building a common narrative a counter-narrative in violent extremism, and a breakout session of global citizen education, nurturing a culture of peace. The plenary session examined the role of youth in providing a counter-narrative for violent extremism through the community engagement, promoting intercultural and interfaith dialogue, and countering hate speech through positive use of social media. The breakout session focused on the education pillar, which is, I consider, a long-term strategy for countering radicalization in all its form through capacity building, workshop, to nurture a culture of peace, tolerance, and the most of all, respect of the other. Let me be frank, UNOSC has been doing this kind of work and programming for years. So far, are we being successful? Could we be Satisfied? I will say to you, no. I think we didn't succeed. We should enhance our work. We should try to demonstrate that can be done, that we have to work with all partners, that we have to engage in all sectors, that we have to have a holistic approach in this work of multilateralism. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this World Forum for Intercultural Dialogue is an ideal venue to disseminate a very clear message through this platform, a message of peace. I will be stating the obvious to say that Baku process, Mr. President Alayev, has become an essential platform that uh, enable the support of intercultural dialogue and promote peaceful and inclusive society. I see the synergies and the complementarity in our work. Our alternative forum every two years indeed complement each other 
and I hope we can continue to build on each other's successes and strengthening our partnership. In fact, Baku could be the regional hub for a UNOC Euro-Asian strategy that I, have, I hope we can revamp again. I'm convinced that in today's complex world, we need this kind of new approaches and new alliances. Let's make our renewal alliances lead the way today. To conclude, uh, Excellency, Mr. President, let me stress that peace takes constant effort and we must all work together within our respective mandates and responsibilities to achieve it. There is a fantastic word in Spanish. The word is convivencia, a single word. It's not uh, two words like in English, living together. No, we have convivencia, convivencia. Let's have a convivencia at the spirit of Baku process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you very much, Excellency, for those remarks. I now call upon uh, Her Excellency uh, Nada al Nashef, uh, Assistant Secretary General for Human and Social Sciences at UNESCO, another really important partner to the forum, an inspirer of our practical actions, and has helped this year, especially this year, with uh, driving our agenda and focus. Nada. Your Excellency President Aliyev, distinguished leaders of international organizations, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to participate once again in this World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue, a valuable tradition that we at UNESCO are proud to have been associated with since the very early days. Our presence here today is a testament to the vision and commitment of President Aliyev and the government of Azerbaijan in their determined leadership to promote intercultural dialogue and the mutual understanding that the Baku process puts forward. The process was launched just over 10 years ago, as you have heard, and the vision to place intercultural dialogue at the heart of the international agenda has had an enduring relevance. We have come a long way and we have evolved together. This time, the concept behind the forum is also about our ability to focus, and I think we can show that less will be more, to aim for coherent structures and debates so that we can follow up with concrete action. This is indeed the idea behind this fifth edition, mobilizing a vision with renewed spirit of innovation to ensure continuity and impact. And we are privileged that UNESCO has worked very closely with the government of Azerbaijan on this preparatory process, underpinning a strong core commitment that we share very deeply. These times certainly call for passionate engagement and proactivism. We see new forces of division emerging, spreading hatred, inciting fear, intolerance and ignorance. We face pushback on the fundamental freedoms, on our normative standards, on our values, as we witness the very retreat of shame. We see conflicts continuing to tear societies apart with the rise of violent conflicts, polarization, and what seems to be a return of expressions of hatred that we thought we had long overcome. All this, of course, as the world faces the largest refugee and displacement crises of recent history, at a time when cultural diversity is under threat from the pressures of exclusive populism. In the words of our Secretary General Guterres, and I quote, most disturbingly, we hear troubling hateful echoes of eras long past and noxious views moving into the mainstream. Today's challenges are complex and they cross borders. They leave no room for unilateralism, complacency or exclusion. Our goal must be to embrace positive transformations on the basis of human rights and mutual respect, not just tolerance, but also empathy, to shape it in positive directions, to craft a future that is more just, inclusive, and sustainable for all. This is the vision of the Sustainable Development Goals and what lies at the heart of the promise to leave no one behind. 
For all of this, we believe dialogue is key to show that diversity is and has always been a source of strength and to empower individuals and societies alike that make the most of this reality for the benefit of all. This idea is at the heart of UNESCO's mission to build the defenses of peace in the minds of women and men. It guides all of our activities and partnerships, including with many of the organizations represented at this forum. This is why we are proud to lead the United Nations International Decade for the Rapprochement of Cultures, under which all our dialogue activities have been undertaken since 2013. This decade comes to an end in 2022, and we have already begun to take stock of what has been achieved and where we want to channel the momentum. What should happen after the decade? This is a unique opportunity to envisage an entirely new initiative, we hope, based on the wealth of experience that has gathered over the years, including through the Baku process and all of its stakeholders. This is also why we tirelessly protect the right to education, for example, at UNESCO, as a fundamental human right, understanding how essential it is to the empowerment of women and men, as it tackles the very processes that can lead to violent extremism by undermining prejudice, by fighting ignorance and indifference. In this same spirit, our work on citizenship education equips learners with skills and behaviors to reap the benefits of the world's growing diversity on the basis of moral and intellectual solidarity. It is underpinned by support to teachers, on a positive note, in promoting peace in classrooms and by bolstering media literacy with young people to prevent radicalization over the internet as we impart the knowledge, skills, and practices that allow effective access, analysis, and critical thought and evaluation of information and media. Through all of these initiatives, intercultural dialogue runs as a connecting thread. However, much remains unknown about what needs to be put in place to make this dialogue effective. How should we measure it and be able to create the evidence for its mobilization as a tool for sustaining peace? This is the journey that UNESCO is currently undertaking through our initiative to measure the enabling environment of intercultural dialogue. And this is the core aspiration of the Baku Forum, that we should co-create, mobilize jointly to better understand and leverage more effective and impactful dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are here today, then we are heeding the call of Baku because we understand the imperative for action. This fast-paced global transformation, social, economic, political, environmental, requires that we step up and respond with relevance, sustainability, agility, and courage. It is our hope that we will continue to work together to find ways to promote meaningful dialogue in order to understand our differences, reinforce and elevate our common values, and harness synergies for the common good. UNESCO will, we commit, do our part, and we look forward to this continuing collaboration. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Excellency al Nashif. I'm now very privileged to be joined by His Excellency Yusuf bin Ahmed al al fashin from the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, an organization, second largest international organization to the UN, that works tirelessly in the world of Muslims, promoting peacefulness. And uh, you're very welcome, Excellency. I think you had, uh, had enough of English, so if you allow me to speak in Arabic, please. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Muhammad Sayyid Ilham Aliyev, Rais Jumhuriya Tadribijan, Sahab Al-Ma'ali wa Sa'ada, Sayyidat wa Sa'ada, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yasurruni an altaqi bikum mujaddadan fi madinati Baku al-Jamila fi al-musharakati fi al-muntada al-alamiya al-khamis fi al-hiwari bayna al-thakafat. Usmahuli fi mustahalli kalimati an ataqaddama biwafir al-shukri wa al-taqdir li fakhamat al-raiz Sayyid Ilham Aliyev, Rais Jumhuri Tadribijan, Walihukumati Biladihi, Aladdawati, Al Karima, Al Hadur, Hadal Muntada, 
مشيدا بالدور الفعال الذي تطلع به جمهورية أذربيجان في تعزيز الحوار الثقافي والحضاري بين العالم الإسلامي والغرب والشكر موصول إلى جميع المنظمين على الجهود التي بذلت لعقد هذا الاجتماع خامة الرئيس أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة يعقد منتدى هذا العام تحت شعار بناء الحوار من أجل العمل ضد التمييز وعدم المساواة والصراع العنيف ولعلنا أحوج ما نكون في هذه الفترة الدقيقة التي نعيشها إلى تعزيز قيم الحوار بين الثقافات وبناء جدار ثقافي حضاري أساسه المشترك الإنساني وميزته التنوع ليقف سد منيعا ضد موجات الكراهية والعنصرية والتمييز وما تنتجه من إرهاب وتطرف إن عالمنا اليوم يشهد المزيد من مظاهر التشردم واتجاها متناميا لحالة عدم الثقة المتبادلة مما يترتب على ذلك من عواقب وخيمة تتمثل في الحروب والصراعات ودمار الشعوب والثقافات ولقد أدى تصاعد الصراع العرقي والديني إلى حدوث توترات بين مجتمعات طالما تعايشت في كنف من الوئام والسلام ومن المحزن حقا أن نشهد هذه التوترات تتصاعد من حين لآخر فهنا تغتال يد الإرهاب والغدر خمسون آمنا من المصلين في مسجد في نيوزيلندا لتطال بعدها هذه اليد الآثمة مئات الأبرياء في كنائس سريلانكا وهو الأمر الذي يثبت بما ليس فيه مجال للشك أن الإرهاب ليس له دين أو جنسية أو عرق فكلا الحدثتين هي نتيجة تبني أديولوجية متطرفة ورؤية أحادية ضيقة للعالم فهما وجهان لعملة واحدة قوامها التمييز ونبذ الآخر ويقتاتان من بعضهما البعض في تصعيد خطاب العزلة الذي يسير بالعالم إلى المزيد من العنف والتطرف وفي خضم هذه التطورات المثيرة للقلق لم يعد الحوار بين الثقافات ترفا فكريا بل حاجة ملحة ووسيلة مهمة للحفاظ على الأسرة الإنسانية من خطر هذه الموجة العالمية من التطرف والإرهاب والتي تجتاح بلداننا من المشرق إلى المغرب لذا فإن منظمة التعاون الإسلامي بصفتها أكبر منظمة دولية بعد الأمم المتحدة والصوت الجامع للعالم الإسلامي بمختلف أطيافه وأعراقه ومذاهبه أسهمت بدور فعال في إثراء الحوار بين الثقافات وتعزيز التفاهم بين أتباع الأديان والحضارات وأخذ هذا المشروع أولوية في برامجها وأنشطتها في الدول الأعضاء وعلى مستوى العالم من خلال وسائل وآليات سياسية وثقافية وإعلامية مختلفة إن القرار المعني بتعزيز الوفاق والتفاهم بين مختلف الحضارات والثقافات أصبح متأصلاً في قرارات القمم الإسلامية ومجالس وزراء الخارجية للدول الأعضاء وبرنامج العمل العشري للمنظمة الذي يؤكد على أن الحوار بين الحضارات المبني على الاحترام المتبادل والتفاهم والمساواة بين الشعوب شرط لازم للسلم والأمن الدوليين والتسامح والتعايش السلمي وإدراكا من منظمة التعاون الإسلامي بالدور المحوري والبناء الذي يمكن أن يلعبه الدين في الارتقاء بالمجتمع ونشر الرحمة والتسامح والأخوة بين البشر قامت منظمة التعاون الإسلامي بتأسيس مركز صوت الحكمة للحوار والسلام والتفاهم وذلك بهدف تصحيح المفاهيم المغلوطة والمتطرفة التي تلصق الإرهاب والتطرف بالإسلام والتصدي لخطاب الكراهية ومراجعة الذات وإشاعة مبادئ القيم والتعايش والتعارف بين الأمم والحضارات على اختلافها إن هناك حقيقة واحدة في هذا الصدد على الجميع أن يدركها وهي أن الديانات السماوية الثلاث نزلت لتكون سبباً في سعادة البشر وليس شقائهم فخامة الرئيس أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة لا يمكن أن نعمل معا ضد التمييز وعدم المساواة ونبذ الصراع والعنف المسلح إن اقتصر الحوار الذي ننشده على مستوى صانع القرار والنخب الأكاديمية والثقافية لذا لا بد من إشراك الشرائح, الشرائح المجتمعية المؤثرة في وعي وتوجيه الرأي العام ولعل أبرزها القيادات الشبابية والدينية المختلفة 
ومؤسسات المجتمع المدني في هذا السياق أدركت منظمة التعاون الإسلامي أهمية التعاون بين صانع السياسات ومختلف الفئات المذكورة للصعود بمجتمعات أكثر تماسكاً وتعايشاً وسلماً بنيانها قيم إنسانية مشتركة فضمن سعي منظمة التعاون الإسلامي لتحسين العلاقة بين المسلمين والبوذيين في شرق وجنوب شرق آسيا بادرت المنظمة ومركز الملك عبد الله بن عبد العزيز العالمي للحوار بين أتباع الأديان والثقافات بالتعاون مع الشركاء في تايلاند بتنظيم ورشة عمل استراتيجية للحوار بين الأديان في بانكوك في ديسمبر 2017 وضمت الورشة مزيجا من القيادات الدينية وقادة المجتمع المدني وصانع السياسات وممثلي الحكومات لرص التحديات التي تواجه المجتمعات الدينية في شرق وجنوب آسيا كما توجهت المنظمة غربا إلى جمهورية أفريقيا الوسطى التي عصفت بها النزاعات بين مكونات شعبها وكان للمنظمة دور في إقناع بعض القيادات الدينية والسياسية بتسهيل إجراءات انتخابات المناطق الخاضعة لسيطرتهم كما دعت المنظمة إلى عقد منتدى بانغي الذي تم تنظيمه في سنة 2014 وإكمالا لهذه الجهود نظمت المنظمة ومركز الملك عبد الله للحوار خلال شهر ديسمبر في السنغال مائدة مستديرة لحوار مشترك بين الأديان تعمل جنبا إلى جنب مع اللجنة الوطنية للتعاون الدولي من أجل الديمقراطية والتنمية وشبكة صانع السلام الدينيين والتقليديين وذلك لتنفيذ اتفاقيات السلام في جمهورية أفريقيا الوسطى ومساندة عملية السلام والمصالحة في البلاد في منح آخر شكلت المبادرة التي اطلقته المنظمة في وضع قرار المجلس الأممي لحقوق الإنسان 16 على 18 موضع التنفيذ الفعلي خطوة إيجابية في جهود مناهضة أشكال الغلو والكراهية والتمييز العنصري وبناء مسار مشترك للتصدي لهذه القضايا وذلك من خلال ترسيخ ثقافة الحوار والاحترام والتفاهم المتبادلين ختاماً أود التأكيد مجدداً على التزام منظمة التعاون الإسلامي بمواصلة جهدها في دعم وترسيخ قيم الحوار بين الأديان والثقافات والحضارات للقضاء على جميع مظاهر التمييز وعدم المساواة والعنف وإسهاماً في الجهود الدولية الرامية لتعزيز السلم والأمن الدوليين وأرجو لهذا المنتدى التوفيق والنجاح وأتطلع إلى نتائج مثمرة ومزيدا من التعاون والتثاقف الحضاري لخلق عالم يسوده السلام والتسامح والمحبة والعدل طاب صباحكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you, Thank you very much, Excellency. I now call upon uh, Her Excellency Gabriela Laitani Ragoni, the uh, S Deputy Secretary General of the Council of Europe. Um, we know very well the commitment to the Council of Europe, both to the Baku process and to the world of intercultural dialogue. Um, Her Excellency Gabriela has a personal stake in the 2008 White Paper, which inspired us so much. Welcome. Your Excellencies, President Aliyev, Vice President Aliyev, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure, first and foremost, I would say, it is a pleasure to be back to Azerbaijan, our important member state, our young and dynamic democracy in this part of Europe and a leading country in the field not only of intercultural dialogue, but today in particular in that area. So this is to say that for me it is a pleasure to speak at this World Forum again. I congratulate the authorities of Azerbaijan not only for the organization of this event, but for the Baku process as a whole. And indeed, 
as we heard from previous speakers, and let me join them, what a successful story is this Baku process. For over a decade, this has provided unrivaled opportunities for experts in the field of intercultural dialogue to share their practice, experience, and understanding. In doing so, the Council of Europe that I represent today in the field of intercultural dialogue and its agenda and initiatives has been given further reach and we are therefore very grateful to this process. Grateful because this approach of intercultural dialogue is very necessary in the complex, modern world in which we live. Back in 2008, our organization published, and it was mentioned before, the white paper on intercultural dialogue with the title, Living Together as Equal in Dignity. The paper developed and summarized our understanding of this compass concept as a premise for the good governance and proper management of cultural diversity. It is a reflection of the values in which the Council of Europe is built, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. With inclusive societies, therefore based on equal rights and dignity for all. This is about the way we live, the way we learn, and the way we work. It's about how we progress together. Our organization has provided the guidance and support that have helped our member states to put this approach into practice. Most of our recent and ongoing activities can be found in our action plan on building inclusive societies. These include our competencies and skills for democratic culture and intercultural dialogue, which educate and equip our young people for the future. Our intercultural cities program that sets a gold standard for inclusion at the local and regional levels. And I'm very happy that this afternoon I will have an opportunity to explain in details how it works in practice, this concept of the intercultural dialogue at local level. The activities of our North South Center in promoting global citizenship among youth and our Cultural Roots Network, which brings together Europe's peoples and places, sharing our history and heritage through cross-border exchanges. All these activities are underpinned by, by up-to-date legal standards for the management of cultural diversity and the achievement of societies free from discrimination. Judgments from the European Court of Human Rights, decisions from the European Committee of Social Rights, our individual conventions and our monitoring body, the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance, all of these play their part. Of course, the promotion of intercultural dialogue is not an event. Rather, it is a never-ending challenge. So too is the moral duty of turning that dialogue into action, the precise subject matter of this important forum. 
from the principles to action. It requires us to dispel ignorance about the other by means of education and openness. It requires us to ease the anxiety people so often feel by coming together instead in a spirit of tolerance, equality, and mutual assurance. And it requires the development of government structures and policies that pave the way to a sustainable future together. Interreligious dialogue, quality education, social inclusion, and the protection of minority rights. Ultimately, progress will be made on the basis of political will. And this is exactly what we feel here. Through you, Mr. President, we feel this strong leadership, this political will to really reach out and implement intercultural dialogue. In Europe today, we see the resurgence of extreme nationalism and populism, which so often seek to undermine to undermine minority rights, intercultural dialogue, and as we heard so eloquently said, multilateral cooperation as well. So it is incumbent on all of us to counter these calls by stating the facts and standing up for our beliefs. A peaceful future in which dialogue forms the basis of cooperation, dignity, and mutually assured progress. This is the price we seek, and this forum, the BACO process, and your contributions here and when back at home are vital for winning it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and for reminding us of the significance and the importance of transferring dialogue into action. And our final partner, I'm very delighted to ask to join us, um, Abdulaziz, Excellency Abdulaziz Osman al Baziri, the Director General of ICESCO. <clears throat> ICESCO, again, fighting tirelessly in and among Islamic communities to promote uh, intra-civilizational work. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellency President Ilham Aliyev, Excellency Mrs. Mehraban Aliyeva, Vice President and President of Haider Ali Foundation, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to speak at the opening of this auspicious op opening of this uh, forum that has become one of the most successful and influential forums in the world. The pa Baku process, which started in 2011, and we are at ISESCO very proud to be part of it, has proven to the world that if there is a political will and commitment, success comes. What the world see right now and live of all these forms of conflict, hatred, discrimination, inequality, and the different forms of xenophobia that are feeding from heeding and uh, hideous and uh, uh, deviant thoughts and, and, and, and forms of, of culture is, is, uh, is, is an example that uh, proves to us that there is no political will by the, those who control at least the, the, the decisions in the United Nations Security Council. I know that many of you do not agree with 
what is happening right now because wars are increasing, poverty is rising, nationalism is also rising, religious fanaticism is causing the, the atrocities that we have seen in uh, New Zealand, in Sri Lanka, in America, in Europe, in many parts of the world, and also the uh, tendency by the superpowers to fight among themselves and not taking care of, of, of the world peace and security which they are responsible to maintain is also causing this confusing situation that we are living in. So we need the political will by the leaders of the world to make dialogue a success and to make the dialogue achieve its goals and objectives. We cannot fight discrimination, inequality, and violent conflict. And also we cannot fight the, the rise of, of, of, of extremism and terrorism that is plaguing the, the, the world without a political will. So there is, the first part of the responsibility lies on the leaders of the superpowers. Let's be sure about that. Number two, our intellectuals and religious leaders have also to come to the reality. We live in a world that is diversified, full of different cultures, religions, uh, languages, races, and this beautiful collection of, of, of, of ideas and of thoughts, of, of cultures, of religious uh, uh, affiliations, make the world beautiful. Why? We use this to make people hate each other and fight each other. So the responsibility lies on the intellectuals and the religious leaders to educate their people, those who belong to their religions or culture or, or, or, or, or regions where they live, that we live in one world and that we are one nation. We are all the creation of God and, they, and we came from one origin, the human race. We are not different races coming from different origins. We are one race, the human family. So education is very important. The media has to play its role. The religious speech at the mosques, churches, and synagogues, and temples every, all, all over the world have also to, to do its job to educate their followers. What we see right now is the opposite. The rise of the rhetoric of, of, of, of hatred, of rejecting the other, of fearing from the other. The xenophobia is at its you know, worst, worst part of its, if, of, of, of its manifestation. In, in Europe, in uh, Asia, in Africa, in the Arab world, in Latin America, everywhere. Now, I, I am very worried that another world war will might, erupt, might erupt because of Venezuela. You will see in the few coming days a very big tension happening between the United States of America and the Russian Federation over Venezuela. They are not entering in a very meaningful and positive dialogue. They are exchanging accusations and, and blaming each other for, for the problem. This is, this is not the world that we want to live in. We want to live in a world that have peace, security, equality, lack of uh, absence of discrimination, and also a world that is governed by very committed leaders who will lead the nations for a better future. I am not going to praise His Excellency the President, because I love him. But we need leaders like Mr. Ilham Aliyev. This is, this is a reality. Without, without his will, without his will and commitment, the BACO process would have never been seen and would have never succeeded. So why the other leaders of the world, especially the, the, the, the leaders of the superpowers, also give some of their will and their commitment to dialogue. His Excellency Mr. Muratino said that. He said, there is a will, but there is no other wills in the other part of the world. They say things, you know, beautiful things, but when they, when they leave the platform, you know, they do something else. Despite the reality that we all know that 20% of Azerbaijan land is occupied by Armenia, despite of this, violation of the international law and the four resolutions of the Security Council of the United Nations, 
Azerbaijan is a land of peace, of dialogue, of respecting cultural and religious diversity. Despite of this reality, <laughs> and the world is not helping Azerbaijan. The world is not helping Azerbaijan. They are doing injustice to Azerbaijan. The land that is occupied has to go back to its homeland. <laughs> this, is, this is the way to peace. This is the way for making dialogue successful. Palestine is also has to be solved. The problem there is malignant and it is unaccepted. What is happening in Jammu and Kashmir in India, which is occupied by India, is also another problem, another failure of the world, world order. The world order is disintegrating, my dear friends. And we are all responsible for keeping this world order intact. And it cannot be intact unless we have the political will, the commitment to dialogue, and the commitment also to make the world safer and livable for all. The Security Council was created to maintain peace and security. But unfortunately, it is not doing this job right now. I know, his, my, my friend, the foreign minister knows that. You know, because I'm not a, a, a politician, but we, we, we, we, we see that it is failing to do its duty. And we are the ones who are not responsible, are, are the ones who are calling for dialogue and for peace and for coexistence, for respecting the, the culture and religious diversity. But the leaders of the superpowers are not doing that. And even though they do this purposefully, they come to us and say, no, we are maintaining peace and security. They lie to us. They lie to us. It's as simple as that. So I appreciate the efforts that is done by Azerbaijan. And ISESCO has been committed from the beginning with Azerbaijan in this path, path of dialogue, of respect for the components of the world. We are all equal in the sight of God. We have to respect our diversity. We have to respect what the peoples of the world have, have chosen for themselves, their religions, their cultures, their languages, their color of skin, whatever they do, we have to respect that. We have, it is not a tolerance. Tolerance means that we accept them with some grudgeness in our hearts. He is bad, but I accept him. No. We have to accept them with respect. We have to respect them. And we wait for them to respect us. This is the only way to peace and security. This is the only way to make dialogue effective and meaningful, to fight discrimination, inequality, and violent conflicts. And the violent conflicts are the product of the ill-minded thoughts that are fed to the young generations of the world by leaders, of political parties, by religious authorities, and by some fanatics who claim to represent religions, and the religions are not responsible in any way of their deeds and their uh, actions. Now they brought to us, to the scene, the, the, the, the, the caliph of the so-called Islamic State, after five years of, you know, absence. They brought him in the scene. Who is behind him? Baghdadi. Who is behind him? They brought him five years ago to fight in Iraq and Syria and to create this, you know, disasters in, in, in, in Iraq and Syria. Millions of people were, were displaced. Hatred is rising between Sunni and Shi. This was never known in our community. And now they brought him again. There is a purpose behind that. I am sure those who made Baghdad in the first place are the same ones who are bringing him right now to create another problem for the Muslim world, to defame the Islamic image, to show the world that Islam is a religion of, of uh, terrorism, of aggression, of hatred, which is not the truth. Islam is a religion of peace, of mercy. Like other religions, there is no religion in the world that calls for killing innocent people or attacking their properties or defaming their integrity. There is no religion that calls for that. The fanatics, who claim to, to, to represent the religions are the ones who are calling for that, but not the religions themselves. And terrorism has no religion. <laughs> so I thank you, Mr. President, and I hope that all of you will go back to your countries and spread the truth that you have, you have seen here in this country and to support Azerbaijan to restore its occupied lands 
which are part of this country and will be all the way until God decides part of this country. May peace and prosperity prevails over the world by the grace of Almighty God. And I thank you all for your good listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Excellency, thank you for your passion, your support. Mr. President and uh, delegates, I told you that we had such good partners, remarkable partnerships create successful processes. And it would be remiss of me not to mention one partner who's been hugely inspirational to our first few years. The United Nations World Tourism Organization, represented here now by the new dire Director General, Manuel, um, is here as well, I think. But we wanted a special um, recognition of His Excellency Taleb Rifai, the former Secretary General, who worked so assiduously with the process in the early days. Thank you very much, and you're here again in Baku. <laughs> so towards the end of our joining ceremony, we, we, we call really for inspiration from the next generation. We need a bit of help. It's a very serious business, the Baku process, but we wanted to finish our morning opening session with reference to the next generation who can remind us that this is indeed a wonderful world. Thank you.
delegates. It can indeed be a wonderful world. Thank you for your attention this morning and have a wonderful forum.